Hey, here's a quick little video about how you can use a tool we made to access unstructured grid uh, ocean model data from an OpenDAP site in, and read it into ArcGIS or ArcMap on the uh, native grid. So um, you, you need an ArcMap 10.1 um, because we're going to use a Python toolkit, okay? So if you don't have that, now you can't use the tool. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> but if you do have it, <clears throat> and you uh, Google on um, DAP to ARC, uh, let's just make sure that works actually, DAP to ARC, um, yep, and you get right to this uh, GitHub page, and uh, if you go here, uh, there's a little bit of, um, a little bit of reading at the bottom of this, um, tells you about it, but uh, all you really need to do is you look for this uh, DAP to TIN, PYT tool, okay, and you can actually just, uh, you can click that and, um, and well, actually it's probably better to get the whole thing, um, there's the, you want these layers here too, so you can go over here and just click to download zip, okay, or you can actually clone the git, if you're into git, you can just clone it in your desktop, but probably for most people they just want to download the zip, which will include these layer files as well as this PYT file, okay, so once you, once you've done that, um, then you just go to ARC and you bring up the little toolbox here and uh, well, you just uh, migrate, look down to where you have the, um, where you downloaded that uh, and unpack that zip file. So in my case, I have this little DAP to ARC uh, uh, folder here. And underneath that, I see this DAP to 10 PYT little toolbox, okay? So it's a Python, a it's an ARC toolbox completely uh, done in Python. So if I, if I open up that, I see this little tool, DAP to 10. It only has one tool in this toolbox. Um, if I double click that, uh, it comes up with a little interface here that tells me to, uh, prompts me for the OpenDAP URL. Um, and you have to know how to use an OpenDAP URL, but um, I guess as a quick, <clears throat> as a quick little uh, demo, if I go to, um, if I go to something like, uh, um, I go to Google and I say smast through, oh, actually I got it right there, but smast threads, let's see if that works. Um, okay, so a threads catalog looks something like this. <clears throat> and in this case, there's a, a bunch of different ocean model products here. Um, you have to know that pretty much that these uh, are going to work with this tool. They're unstructured grid data of a particular um, flavor, but um, if you go into this hindcast, say, and you go to the, there's hourly, uh, there's a 33 year hindcast, there's hourly values and mean values. If we click on this hourly values <clears throat> and scroll down a little bit, we have this open DAP link. If we click that open DAP link, we get a, a data set access form, which comes back. And it, if we scroll down, actually, we can see all the different variables that are here and a little bit about um, each variable. So if we actually go way down here, um, we can see that there's a variable called salinity, um, and if we weren't sure what that meant, we could maybe there might be a long name or a standard name here, which we could see. And it also we can see there's a lot of time steps. Okay, there's like 300,000 time steps. Um, <clears throat> so um, what we can do is, uh, oh, I should have. While we're here, there's the data URL. So if I did Control A, Control C here. Um, I can read that, I, I can copy that on the clipboard, um, and then I could drop it back into this um, spot here. Um, and uh, so now I've put in the OpenDAP URL for that data set, it's sort of like a file name. Um, and then down here, I can uh, select from um, a bunch of different, uh, different variables that are available in that particular URL. Now you have to know from perhaps perusing in your web browser, so you want to read salinity, you can click salinity here, and then you can go to the year, uh, month, and day, and hour that you want to read, and um, and then you can select which vertical layer you want, zero for the surface, one minus one for the bottom. Let's do bottom salinity, just to be different, and um, you can leave this in a default position, but this is where the, you can, you can specify this to be where your tin, your triangulated, and uh, triangular and irregular network in ArcGIS parlance, your triangular grid is going to go. And so I, uh, I click uh, OK here, and if everything 
uh, works okay. Wait a minute. It is not a member of the blah blah. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a problem or not. Um, let's see here. Every year. And I'm sure you mean. Um, It seems to be working anyway. Um, <laughs> not sure what that uh, warning was. So it's going off and it's 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 getting data from this address and then it comes back and displays it here in ARC. Now you'll notice that the layer um, that it used, uh, the default layer, is not super awesome. Um, you know, you could ch you can go in then and, and change the um, colors here, um, or I can just uh, I can I can load a particular um, layer file if I, um, let's see, how do I do that? Um, save as layer, create layer package, uh, properties maybe, and then maybe load, we'll see. <clears throat> um, okay, I guess I'm going to, I'm going to import, um, hopefully a layer from a, uh, Boy, now I have to go navigate and find that thing again. I should find my layer that I've downloaded. Let's see, I've got a salinity one, a temperature one, a wave height one. You can make your own, but I mean, it may be that this gets you um, most of the way there. Um, yeah, so that looks pretty good. Um, so here's a salinity. Here's the salinity for this um, that time step that we that we loaded, and um, of course, if we if we zoom in here. We can see the full resolution of the grid, and the, and the nice thing here is that we see the actual resolution, um, uh, the original resolution of the model. So, uh, if we wanted to actually do some raster processing, we could go in here and say set the extents of the. Um, I think we do this in uh, in environments, and we go in and we could say processing extent. Um, it's the default, but we could change it to be the same as the display. Okay. And, and oh, by the way, um, in this script, it's actually converting into the mass state plane uh, meters uh, because that's what the um, CZM wanted, uh, coast, mass coastal zone management. But you could change it in this, um, this little toolbox. Um, we don't have it being able to be changed through the interface. But anyway, let's, let's go ahead and, and uh, map this to a raster field. So we've got the raster display, okay, and then we can, um, if we say, okay, um, I think we can, um, actually, I guess it's under uh, toolbox, I think it's field processing, what is it? Um, okay, I think this is in the, um, I go into the toolbox here. It's in the um, uh, tin to the multi-dimensional tools. Maybe no, no, no. Let's see. Um, 3D analyst tin triangulated surface um, master. From tin, tinder raster, got it. <laughs> so tinder raster uh, import to import input tin, sneak offs. Okay, yeah, just take the defaults. You can do 200, and you know we can do the sampling distance here, or we could say um, a specific cell size. Let's just go with that. Um, what kind of interpolation method? If we say okay, goes off and will give us a back a tin that covers the same. Uh, region here as the the value. Um, oops, let's uh, let's turn this one off. And um, and there we go. We have a raster that actually faithfully reproduced the shoreline, but um, and with a cell size here that's uh, well, we should have picked a particular cell size that matched the smallest triangle or region. Um, but anyway, you can see that you can you can get the full resolution of just the part that you need 
um, at, the at a resolution that doesn't degrade um, the original data and do so in a way that preserves the original shoreline. So um, I think that concludes the little demo. Thanks. Uh, actually, there is one more thing. Um, if you want to take a look at this uh, the guy, you can just uh, click it um, and open up the tool. Um, actually, wait. No, right mouse click on the uh, on the toolbox itself and uh, go to edit. And when you do that, it should come up. Um, it might come up in a text editor, or if you have it associated with a um, a uh, some kind of Python environment, it will come up in a in a Python editor. And um, just waiting for it for a second, and uh, here it comes in the. Uh, uh, it's now up in Canopy. If I go here, I can show you the uh, show you the editor. So here's actually the the script. <clears throat> and if you look in here, um, you can see how this thing works, and it's all just pure Python. Um, and here's a little bit where we've um, hardwired in a particular um, projection. To, to transform this data, which originally was just a, a regular old uh, geographic um, coordinates and um, flat long coordinates in, in WGS84. So we transformed it into this uh, main state plane coordinate on the mainland um, in, in meters. Um, so you could just comment this out or something if you wanted to keep it in geographic or put your own in, or um, eventually we could, get, um, we could get fancier with this. But you could obviously just modify this on the fly and then just or add functionality and just then rerun the tool again and it's uh, good to go. That's the kind of neat thing about these Python uh, toolboxes. So now that's really it. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.